In the 1950s, high mobility warfare seemed to be inevitable for large-scale warfare. While continuously improving the level of mechanization of the troops, another issue has been troubling armies around the world, which is how to quickly deploy armored weapons. If it's just a matter of transporting jeeps to a certain place, it's simple. But transporting standard tanks, self-propelled artillery, and other heavy equipment to a certain place is still a technical challenge. Constrained by the existing transport capabilities of aircraft at the time, the weight of heavy equipment that airplanes and helicopters could transport was limited to some light vehicles. However, this did not hinder people's determination to push the limits of technology. Since aircraft were unable to achieve a major breakthrough in the short term, the approach was to start with the cargo being carried. In the mid-1950s, the United States initiated the development of the XM-104 Light Self-Propelled Artillery, which is a typical approach of modifying equipment to fit aircraft. According to the requirements of the U.S. Army, designers needed to create a self-propelled artillery small enough to be carried by existing transport aircraft, while also being able to carry a 105mm howitzer, which is an ultralight self-propelled howitzer. The prototype vehicles were introduced in the early 1960s, and in 1962, six prototype vehicles underwent testing, with these vehicles being structurally similar overall, but with some minor differences. The vehicle body of the self-propelled artillery is very compact, with a length of about 4.1 meters and a width of 1.75 meters. The howitzer is mounted at the rear of the vehicle in an open configuration, and when the howitzer is retracted, the overall height of the vehicle is about 1.75 meters. The combat weight is approximately 3.9 tons, and the weight for air transportation is about 3.27 tons. Taking one of the prototype vehicles as an example, it is powered by a 66-horsepower Ford M151 gasoline engine and uses a GS-103 transmission with four forward gears and one reverse gear. The maximum speed on the highway is about 56 kilometers per hour, and it also has the capability to travel on water. The running gear uses a torsion bar suspension with four pairs of road wheels with the drive wheel at the front and no idler wheel. The last pair of road wheels also serves as the guide wheel, and the track width is 355 millimeters. The howitzer is an experimental 105 millimeter light howitzer that can fire the standard ammunition of the U.S. military at the time. The gun mount installed on the vehicle body uses existing technology, and the howitzer has an elevation angle of 5 degree to 75 degree in the vertical direction, and a total shooting angle of 45 degrees in the horizontal direction. Because the vehicle body is too light, in order to withstand recoil, a spade is installed at the rear of the vehicle. It should be said that the operational redundancy of the howitzer is still very good, with a wide firing range which helps the howitzer to perform. The theoretical maximum rate of fire can reach 10 rounds per minute, however, none of these are problems. What the military found most unacceptable about the XM-104 was its lack of protection. The vehicle body is made of steel, but the surface of the vehicle body is only a thin layer of steel plate, and it is open at the top, so it is fundamentally unable to withstand attacks. There are seats for four crew members in the vehicle with the driver in the front left, behind him is a back-to-back -back seat, and the right side seat is also installed in the same way. The crew members are almost completely exposed, making them very vulnerable to small arms fire. There is a piece of armor plate on each side of the vehicle body that can be laid flat to both sides. But this armor plate cannot provide sufficient cover and is better than nothing. Although the self-propelled artillery solved the problem of air transport, its performance in other aspects was indeed compressed to the extreme. Apart from air transportation without cargo, the howitzer can only carry 10 rounds of ammunition after landing, and its combat operations are heavily dependent on support vehicles. The self-propelled artillery not only cannot provide basic protection, but also cannot provide a mounting point for self-defense weapons, so the gun crew needs to bring their own light weapons. Another problem is that the vehicle body is too light, 
and with the howitzer installed, the center of gravity is too high, so it could overturn if the angle of inclination exceeds 20 the gro. The related testing work continued until 1965, with the test results being somewhat mixed. However, it also foreshadowed the end of the XM-1104 self-propelled howitzer, because breakthroughs were made in the technology of large transport aircraft and helicopters, and the advent of turboshaft engines allowed the aviation industry to enter a period of great development in the 1960s, with many famous large aircraft being proposed during this period, such as the famous CH-47 Chinook, heavy transport helicopter. The increase in the carrying capacity of aircraft, as well as advancements in parachute technology, provided the possibility for air transport and airdrop of larger armored weapons. Due to the lack of development prospects, the U.S. Army subsequently closed the XM-104 project, with most of the remaining prototype vehicles being dismantled, leaving only one for exhibition.